In this video, I'm going to develop an event-driven program that will allow us to draw a line on lines on a TK Inter canvas and then be able to delete those lines. And the events are going to be attached to appropriate button clicks. Let's first of all have a look at the runtime for the program I'm going to discuss in this video. Here you can see we have a window and within the window we have a canvas that I've set to the background colour of white and the canvas is 400 by 400 in size. Down here you can see I've got two buttons and if I come here and click on this button what's going to happen it's going to draw a random coloured line in a random position and of a random length so let's just click on it and see what we get and you can see we get the line there if i come down to this button and i click on it what's going to happen it's going to clear that canvas it's going to delete the line so let's do that now and you can see it's gone now i'm going to come back up to here and i'm going to click on this a number of times and every time i click on it you can see it's drawing lines randomly in terms of their colour, in terms of their length and also in terms of their position. But I'll just keep on clicking on and you can see we get all of these lines drawn at random. If I now come down to this and I click on it, what's going to happen? All of those lines are going to be deleted and the canvas we can say has been cleared. So let's click on this button here and there you can see the canvas has been cleared and all of those lines have been deleted. Now this runtime is for the program I wish to discuss in this video. This is the computer program for the runtime we've just been looking at and some of the features of this computer program we've seen in the playlist on TK Inter and I'm going to have to rely on you looking back to those videos if there are aspects of what's shown here you're unclear on but I'll just briefly go over them here so you can reflect back on the work we've done in the previous videos. This line enables us to use the functions that are defined in the random module such as this one here which enables us to generate a random integer. This line is a message to an instance of a canvas class that's bound to this name and it's going to invoke this method here the create underscore line method which takes this lot in as its parameters and if you look here at this F string this has been described in a previous video and what this does is generate a random color code to enable us to set a random color for the lines that we're going to be drawing. Now this is a function that will draw a random line and it will be translated to a form that's capable of being executed but it won't be executed yet this is another function and this is capable of deleting lines that will be drawn on the canvas and it is translated into a form that's capable of being executed but it won't execute yet. This line creates an instance of a window that's bound to this name my underscore window and it will be the first line to execute when you run this program. This line will create an instance of the canvas class that's associated with the my window that was created on this line and the canvas will have the width and height of 400 and it'll have the background color of white. This line creates an instance of a button that will be bound to this name my underscore button one and this button will be associated with this window that again was created on this line and the text to be shown in this button will be shown here click for a random colored line and what we can see here we have command being assigned random line now if you have a look at this word random line you can see it is the name associated with this function i.e. this name here now setting this to random line is telling the computer program that when the button is clicked on, i.e. the button that this is creating, then this code here will execute. This function will execute. If we now go on to this line, you can see we're creating another instance of the button class that's going to have the name my underscore button two, 
i.e. this is bound to that instance. And if we have a look at the arguments here, we can see that we're passing in my window again. The text, well now the text has been changed to say click to clear coloured lines. And if you look here, we're setting command to delete lines. Now that means that this button is going to be tied to this function here. So when we click on this button, this code will be executed. So what we have, we have an event driven program. We click on a button and one of these functions will execute. If we click on this button, then this code is executed. If we click on this button, then this code is executed. Now, when you look at these three program statements, what we have done, we've created three widgets. We've created a canvas, and we've created a button, and we've created another button. But they are not yet placed upon the window that was created on this line. That's what happens here. We use the grid method to place the canvas at row zero, column zero. We use the grid method again to place this button at row one, column zero. And we use the grid method again here to place this button at row two, column zero. So when we've executed this slot, we will have the window as we saw it when we observed the runtime for the program. That is a canvas under which there will be two buttons. Now, as soon as the program has executed this line, we go on to this program statement. And what this program statement will do is put this application it's a small program, but you can think of it as an application, into a loop called the main loop. And what that means is the program will now be sitting there, as I'm now going to show it here, waiting for something to happen. Now, what it's waiting for is the user to click on one of these buttons. Now, if I was to click onto this button, it'll draw a line on the canvas. If I was to click onto this button, it would clear that line. So we can see that the program now is sitting there waiting for something to happen. And it is in what's described as an event loop. It's waiting for an event. And it's running round in this here in what's called the main loop. Now Python, with the help of the operating system, will be waiting for some user to do something with this computer program. And if the user doesn't do anything, the program will just sit there, as you can see, waiting for something to happen. It doesn't do something off its own bat. It's waiting for an event. It's waiting for the user to fire some kind of event. And for this program, we're just firing button clicks. Let's now zoom into this region of the runtime so we can see the computer program at the same time. Now, if you look at this region, you can see here we can see a little bit of the canvas and here we can clearly see the two buttons. Now, if the user clicks onto this button that was created on this line, then what we need to look to is this here, where the command is being assigned random line. And of course, this name here, random line, is the name of this function. And of course, what's now going to happen is the code inside this is going to execute. And what executes first are these four lines. And x1, y1, x2, and y2 are set to a random integer, which defines the beginning and end of the line, where x1 and y1 define the beginning of the line, its coordinate position, and x2 and y2 show us the other end of the line. And between these two coordinate positions, the line will be drawn. And here, this named argument fill is assigned this which is an F string that returns us a random color. And we're making the width of the line 20. So we can see that this line is a message to the instance of the canvas that invokes this method, create underscore line, where this lot is taken in as the arguments. And you'll get a line drawn in a random position with a random color, but with a width of 20. And you've seen that running when we looked at the runtime at the beginning of this video. Now, when the user clicks onto this button, we need to reflect on where the button was created in the code, which is here. And again, we come to look at the command to see what that was set to. And we can see that it was set to delete lines. Now, that is the name of this function here, as you can see. Now, within this function, we just have this one line of code. 
and we can see it's a message to the canvas and we're invoking the delete method and what we're passing in is the string all and it's all in lowercase and it has to be don't put it in mixed case or uppercase and what this method will do is delete every line that's drawn on the canvas now in the case of this program that's all we've drawn on the canvas is a lot of lines but of course we could have drawn other shapes we could have drawn rectangles we could have drawn ovals and what this will do is get rid of whatever was on the canvas effectively clearing the canvas contents so what we have introduced here which we haven't seen before in this series on TK Inter is this delete method where we can delete all now it is possible to delete specific shapes that have been drawn on the canvas i.e. not delete everything that's on the canvas just selecting but we'll come back to how that can be achieved in a later video just an aside on this computer program it's clearly a demonstration program so I can show you how to draw lines on a canvas and also delete them and at the same time show how we can attach code to the click event of buttons in an event driven program now in reality if I was to follow good programming practice I wouldn't be using these literal values here whereas you can see I'm making them all 400 for for good reasons for the demonstration of this piece of code here for example what I've got the width of the canvas to 400 and the height to 400 what if I wanted the canvas to resize when I move the window then clearly this isn't the way to go I would need here some kind of variable that I can calculate as I change the size of the window so bear in mind that it isn't usual to shove these numbers in as you can see here but then again as I've already said it's just a demonstration program I would also like to point out that Python will support a number of paradigms for writing code namely object oriented paradigm and the procedural paradigm now this demonstration program belongs to the procedural paradigm I know I've talked about classes and instances of classes ie objects but the very fact that here I'm using functions shows us that we're dealing in the procedural paradigm I personally write my code in the object oriented paradigm so I would be putting all of this code into an appropriate class and then creating an instance of that class I wouldn't do it the way I've showed here now I will be coming back to doing similar examples to this but it'll all be from the viewpoint of the object oriented paradigm and I strongly suspect that to do this kind of thing that I've done in this video I would find myself inheriting from the canvas class and that's something to be discussed in a later video but here I didn't want the complexity of the object oriented paradigm being placed upon the description in this video that's why I've gone with the procedural approach check out the supporting website for these videos in addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?